Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Shadow Ray. And, A, we are going to be looking at the two new profiles for the two brand new heroes of the Easterlings. I'm so excited. Ah, oh, it's going to be amazing. And I already had a look at them and I'm so happy. Obviously pre-ordered them. But here's my thoughts. So we're going to go over the profiles of each one of them. And then I'll give my little thoughts afterwards on basically if I like them or not. And then their competitive aspect in middle of strategy battle game. So without further ado, and if you're ready to hear me butcher some names, let's get crack a in, eh? So we've got Rutabai, General of the Dragon Legion. Oh, that's such a title. And she, that's right, if you can see, keyword woman. Oh, so we've got a second woman keyword in the game. She is 110 points, which is phenomenal. I'm so happy. And she's a hero of valor. That is absolutely bonkers. 110 points. Wow. Uh, she is movement six, fight six. Yes. Yes. Games Workshop. Understanding that Eastlings should be high fight value. Four plus shoot value. Eh, we don't care. Uh, strength four. Awesome. Defense seven. Perfect. Three attacks. Amazing. Three wounds. Awesome. Courage five. She's a brave girl. And she has three might, two will, and two fate. So, as you can probably tell, that's a fantastic profile. Two fate with three wounds at defense seven is pretty hard to break through. She has a shield with three attacks, so if you really don't want her to die, you can shield. That's six dice you're rolling on the jewel roll at fight six. Amazing. So, yeah, and three might is fantastic. It gets better, though. She's got heroic strike, so we've got... Uh, another heroic strike in the army. We, we had plenty of that in the list before. And she's got a heroic challenge. Like, sure, pass. Um, but what makes her fantastic is she's got Master of Battle 3+. Plus. So, in case you don't know what Master of Battle is, it is if an enemy hero calls a heroic within 6 inches of this model, or a model with the Master of Battle special rule, you roll a dice if it has a value. Like this one has 3+. Plus. So, if you roll a 3+, plus on that dice, you get to copy that heroic action for free, no will, uh, no might spent, nothing, and even if you don't own that heroic action, you can still do it. So if a hero nearby calls a heroic defense, and you kind of want to nick it, go for it. Someone calls it once to call heroic combat, you can nick it. If someone strikes while she's in combat with you, you can nick it. So she does what Amdor does. Amazing, but it's not guaranteed. It's still a three plus roll. I love it. And then she's got the unyielding, uh, unyielding combat stance, which is basically if there's any reason she would to go prone, like knocked over by cavalry, sorceress blast, you're all dice on a four plus. She just shrugs it off and stays on her feet because uh, she's a little agile thing. Love it. She's got the phalanx special rule, which is awesome. So you can stick her at the front of your uh, pipe block, and they can all make way. Up to two models can make way for her. Um, I love it so much. And show no mercy. So when making strikes against enemy models that are trapped, uh, Ruta Bai may re-roll failed to wound rolls. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Okay. I love that profile so much. Um, yeah, I'll talk about my thoughts after. And now we're going to do... Uh, okay, let's give it a go. Uh, Burger, Broager, Broarger, Bro, the Conjurer. 80 points, that's right. He's my bro. Um, 80 points is also... Fantastic, as you'll find out in a minute. Hero Fortitude. This guy's a man, though. That's fine. He is movement six. Uh, fight three. Cool. He's a caster. That's fine. Uh, four plus shoot value. Strength three. Defense five. One attack. Two wounds. Courage four. And defense five is solid for a caster, by the way. She has two. Uh, he has two might, five will, and two fate. Right. Okay. I'll go over everything in a sec. I'll just get through this. He has heavy armor, Eastling Battle Stave, which is a spear or a two handed axe. So you've got plus one to wound in the list if you want it. Not that you want to chuck this bloke in combat, but I mean, you can. Why not? He's got two. He's, he's got one attack. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, and he's got the Sorcerer's Adept special rule. So each time he rolls a natural six when making a casting test, he will gain a point of will after the, the resolve, you resolve the effects of the magical power. So exactly the same as resisting. So basically, if you resist a magical power and roll a natural roll of a six, that will is restored. He does it on the cast. So ideally, you want to be rolling some sixes with this guy on casting. It might come up, it might not. I, I, I've got a pretty good feeling it will. But it's just a nice little bonus rule. Um, on top of his extra will he has. So... 
what magical powers has this war priest got he's got blade wrath 12 inches two plus so blade wrath that increases uh you pick a model within 12 inches and they increase their strength to strength six if you channel it it goes up to strength 10 so you can imagine if you're going to be uh bringing a router by and cast that on her she's suddenly got you know three strength six attacks or three strength ten attacks depending on what you want to kill that's awesome really good i like that spell but of course the uh old easterling war priest had that um he's got fury easterlings six inch aura three plus awesome two spells we know if you play easterling war priests and then the extra ones enchanted blades 12 inches four plus so enchanted blades is awesome uh, pretty similar to Blade Wrath, apart from when you pick that model, they get to reroll failed wound rolls. If you channel it, it's plus one to wound. That's nuts. I love it. So you can give something else plus one to wound. So, for example, if you're bringing Andrew and listen this bloke, you can pop that on him, and he can be plus one to wound on the charge on his horse, rerolling. Disgusting. Uh, and then he's got Tremor, six inch range, uh, cast five plus. Basically, you pick a model with this spell, and if it goes off, you roll d6, and it goes in a straight line from the caster and that model backwards. Uh, and basically any model hit by it is knocked prone and suffers a strength 6 hit, including the model that was the initial target. So you can fire it down a shield wall or something like that. It's pretty tasty. If you're going against Rohan, they've got all their cab blocked up, which hopefully they shouldn't if they're playing them right, I think. But sometimes it happens, it gets into a bit of a mosh pit in the middle. You, uh, you can just knock them all off their horses. Uh, yeah, sure, go for it. That's awesome. I love them. So, just to give you an idea, uh, Bro Broerger, the Conjurer, is 80 points, which is 20 more points than an Eastling Warpriest. Okay, but do what do we get for those 20 points? Just in case you're not familiar with the Eastling Warpriest profile. Um, well, most of their stats are exactly the same, so the same fight, strength, defense, stuff like that. Um, both got two wounds, both courage four, but different start with might. You get two might instead of one. You get five will instead of three. And you get two fate instead of one. That's massive. Because uh, I think games work to value might, will, and fate at five points per. So if you think about it, that's, um, what's that? 20, 20 points in might, will, and fate. Refunded. Done. That's where his extra 20 points comes from. Ah, but on top of that, you also get um, two extra spells on top of this. So you get the uh, Enchanted Blades and Tremor which the Eastling War Priest don't get. On top of that, the Eastling War Priest, Blade Wrath, has got a 6 inch range, whilst this guy has got it at 12 inch range. That's pretty big, okay? Um, yeah, other than that, this guy can't take a horse, but the War Priest can, so if you want to have horses, go for the normal War Priest. But, it's just an absolute bargain, okay? An absolute bargain. I love it. They're the same heroic tier, so, yeah. Right, okay. What do I think of these models? A, the sculpts are fantastic. I've already said that in my previous video, looking at the models. They're phenomenal, okay? Um, they look hardcore. They look easterling. I love it. The second thing, their stats and their profile are phenomenal, okay? As you can guess by the thumbnail, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to decide whether Rutabai is going to be replacing Amdor in some lists. And my honest opinion... I think it depends on the list you're running, mainly. Because a lot of people will stick with Amdur, because what he's got over Rutabai is he is a 3-inch banner, can be a 6-inch if you cut the enemy's leader's heads off. He's also got a horse, an armoured horse, and that's massive in Middle Earth, okay? Sure, horse can just be shot out straight away, and it happens quite a lot, so whatever. Um, the horse would be nice on this character, but she doesn't get one. That's fine, I can live with it. She's going to live in front of a phalanx, I think. Um, yeah, but what's going for this character is she is cheaper, and she she's just super tanky. Um, I think she's higher defense than Amdor as well. She is. She's one point defense higher than Amdor, so strength four opponents will be wounding Amdor on fives, whilst they'll be wounding her on sixes. The other thing that Amdor has above her is an elven made weapon. Okay, and that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie, that is awesome, right? But he's more important, uh, more more important, more uh, points. So, yeah. He is uh, 20 more points, or uh, 35 more points if you give him a horse, than Rutabai. 
yeah, he's going to get some bonuses. But she's not laying that far behind from what I can see. Not at all. Um, yeah. When I say it depends on what list you're going to bring, I love the fact that it's probably feasible to bring Kamul, the Easterling, and Rutabai together. Because now you're not spending a ridiculous amount of points on two heroes. Saving those extra couple of, uh, 20 points just makes her so valid for me when I'm bringing a Wraith. And that's all about me. The other thing is, uh, what makes her fantastic is she synergizes so well with uh, Brogear here. Because of his spells, um, he can buff her up to be an absolute killing machine, which can make up for the lack of horse. So you can decide you're suddenly going to have three attacks at strength 6 slash strength 10. Or you want to reroll all your failed to wounds. Or if you've trapped someone, you can then reroll um, all failed to wounds anyway and be strength 6 slash 10. Amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, I do believe her place is going to be uh, at the front of a pike block if that's how you like to play. If you're not running um, pike blocks really, sure, stick with Andor because he's got the mobility, you can stick with your cataphracts. Okay? But her at the front of a pike block, cataphracts swing around the side and trap enemies in on her. She's going to be fight six. They're going to have to send a pretty reliable hero in to go and try and take her out. Uh, defense seven, three wins, two fate, fight six. So if you're going against a reliable hero, you're going to be rolling more dice than all of them because you're going to have two pikes behind her. Yeah, you're rolling five dice. It's pretty crazy. If you add a banner to that as well, you're rolling six dice, pretty much with the reroll. It's going to be absolutely terrifying, I think, to get into combat with her. She's going to be awesome, and I love it. She seems like an absolute duelist, and that's what I love. Um, yeah, Broger, 100%, if you're bringing a War Priest, he should be replacing your War Priest. Unless you need the horse, he should be replacing your horse, uh, War Priest. And I get why you want the horse, having your um, Fury up. I mean, I don't know why you want Fury that badly on Easterlings. You've got to be up to, like, Courage 4 on most of them anyway when you break. But it's nice to have if you're going against uh, Army of the Dead or something like that. But this, this guy can do all sorts. He can wreck the enemy's front line, which is very important with the uh, Tremor. He's got the Enchanted Blades, Blade Wrath. Um, Enchanted Blades, just letting you reroll, is awesome. So if you do get a good trap on a hero or something like that, or a captain, enemy captain, and you've got your uh, your captain on, on on Armored Horse in on him, you can like try and help him out there. It's just awesome. I think she's going to be stunning with Camel the Easterling. That's what I think. Having Camel float around, being a combat wraith, being able to transfix people, and her going in to finish them off is going to be pretty crazy. Having Camel on a Felbies, running in, knocking people prone. Oh, yeah, it's going to be absolutely delicious. Um, I'm very much looking forward to this, and I hope my made to order hurries up for the next tournaments I've got coming up, because I want to give these guys a go, uh, an absolute go. Uh, what I want with my new tournaments is I want to run new factions, because it's just fun, okay? I played the same factions for quite a while. I'm going to try and mix it up. So Dwarfies and Eastlings. Kind of keep it in theme with the new book coming out, Defense of the North. So, yeah. What can I say? Competitiveness. Arutabai, 100%. She's competitive. Perfect points level for it. She's not too expensive. She'll bring a lot to the table in, in, in like troop killing or dueling with a hero. She's got the strike. She's got three might. She fights six. She's going to be up there uh, dueling with other big named heroes. I love it. Um, don't expect her to fully like take out a Strider because he's obviously got Andor and he'll cut her in half. But the Borum is the um, like name a fight six hero and you'll go toe to toe with them quite a lot of the time. Obviously, elves are a bit of a pain, but is what it is. Is she's got Master of Battle, and in the late game when you've run out of might and your opponent's got might, you've got that kind of like safety netting, safety net. To you running out of might, you've got the master of battle there. So it's not always this guy's got um, mighty hero on Strider. He's going to constantly have priority pretty much or get to dictate who moves first from this point onwards. No, if she's on the table near him, at least you'll have a chance of nicking it for free. And you'll find you might um, sap your enemies might quicker than yours because you might copy quite a lot of their heroics. So if you're getting into combat with some big tier hero, so Boromir charges in, well, hey, look at me, six might, and he heroic strikes, master of battle it, three plus, not hard to roll. You might be able to keep up with the Boromirs. You'll definitely be able to keep up with like things like Faramir, easy kill, I think, for her to an extent. Um, Aomir is lower fight value than her. 
yeah. I mean, what can I say? She's she's a general of the Dragon Legion. If you know the Easterlings, you know how big that is, okay? You know why it upsets me. The reason I avoided Easterlings for a while is not because I don't like them. I absolutely love them. My favourite faction on the table, like, to look at, is because they're Fight 3. And I don't think they should be Fight 3 at all. The Captains most certainly should not be Fight 4. Same as the Nort Captain. It's just... Yeah, that I mean, Dragon Knights at fight five I can live with because they've got strike, but even then it's a bit. Ah, uh, come on, these are a warring race. These are a warrior culture, and they live to fight. They shouldn't be the same fight as a damn orc. Okay, <laughs> it's just yeah, um, and it looks like we're taking a step in the right direction with these heroes. Absolutely. Um, what can I say? All we can do now is wait for Defence of the North and see what Legendary Legion we get for the Easterlings. And I'm very excited to see what the Dragon Emperor is. Assuming it is a Dragon Emperor, it's, oh, it's got to be. Obviously it is. Okay. But I'm hoping for some kind of fight or a buff or some upgrade that he gives to his troops. So maybe, um, yeah, if you bring uh, troops with the Dragon Emperor, they get the Black Dragon upgrade free. Or they get an additional bonus. Or maybe they get, I don't know, name an upgrade. Okay, there's loads out there. There's loads out there. Okay, it's not it's not unthinkable. Or maybe there's what would be awesome is having the Dragon Emperor give for all like maybe a point. They all get plus one fight value, and then being able to make them black dragons or something with the legendary legion. So you can start bringing fight five Easterlings onto the table. I mean, don't don't cry OP yet. It's not it's not a thing. I'm just saying. Okay, but that would be amazing, and we'd have a fight high fight evil faction. Which I think evil do need. Because thinking at the top of my head. What high fight evil faction do we have? We've got like black Numenorians, But you're not going to spam a whole army of them really. You can but. And even then it's only fight four. So we've got the rooks to do that. I'm talking fight five higher infantry. Let's, let's, let's dance with the elves. Come on. Give me my fight five faction. <laughs> anyway. That's it. That's all I've got to say. I love these guys so much. I can't wait to see them on the tabletop. Uh, and try them out. You will be seeing battle ports with them, so you'll see how I get on. Um, if you like the video, do hit the like button, and if you're feeling especially saintly today, do consider subscribing. But even if you don't do either of those things, I still hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.